So now what I want to do is I want to add an intro video that plays before my title screen. So a little kind of preview of what's about to come. So to do that, I need to import a video into Clint. Importing video, like importing images, is very specific in Clint. You need to have exactly the right file format. If you remember when we imported an image in Workshop 1, what happened was when we didn't have a JPEG, it wouldn't let us import it. It's exactly the same with movie files. So you need to have an MP4. So if I go into my Finder now, and I find, I'm gonna to go to my original movies for a minute, and find a QuickTime movie just to show you what will happen when I try and import it. So this is the video we're working with today, this intro movie. If I play it, it's a little kind of introduction um, to the topics we'll be talking about in this documentary. Okay, if I click on that and try and drag it into Clint, I'm gonna drag it straight into my storyboard to add it as a sequence. If I let go, I get my media compatibility warning coming up. These media files cannot be imported inside Clint. Please check for format compatibility. And again, it shows us under video MP4. Okay, so if you don't know how to convert a movie file to an MP4, on the Clint website, it recommends a program called Miro. Okay, Miro Video Converter. And this is actually a handy video converter. It's really simple to use. All you have to do, drag your video on, choose the format from this drop down down here. So we've got audio video. So obviously I want an MP4 file. If you click on this cog down here, there's a few options you can change. For example, custom size. If you want to change the actual size of your video, you can do that. And that's something you might want to think about if you're trying to save disk space. So again, what we're creating is a web project. And with all web projects, you want them to load as quickly as possible. And if you have big videos, big uncompressed videos in Clint, it might mean that your project is a bit cumbersome when it comes to loading it in a browser once you've uploaded it. Okay, so we need to think about keeping video sizes down where possible. Okay, and then basically what I do is I click convert to MP4. I'm not gonna do that now, but this Miro video converter is really useful if you're looking to convert your files. I've already done my files here, my mp4s folder. So let me just hide my converter and let me find my intro video. So here it is, intro mp4. And again, I'm gonna click and drag that into the storyboard to create a new sequence from this video. And I'm gonna let go. And there's my intro sequence. Not currently connected to my title screen. Again, you can see no arrow going to it like with our instructions down here. So I'm gonna position my intro video to the left of my title screen. So I wanna show that it's gonna play before that title screen. Could place it above, but for me it makes sense to have it on the left. Okay, and what we're gonna do, I'm gonna double click on it and go into the sequence editor. So I want this video to pretty much play as it is. It is one minute and three seconds long. If I select it, I don't need to worry about position and size because when you import any video into Clint, what generally happens by default is it has this fit to window option ticked. And we'll see what that does in a minute. You can change this if you want, so you can untick fit to window and you can change the fill options. So we looked at those when we added a background image in workshop one. So with video you can have zoom or letterbox. I'm gonna leave mine as zoom. You might wanna use letterbox if you're more interested in maintaining the aspect ratio of your video. Okay, so I'm not going to add any text or anything to this video, but what I am going to add is a button that's going to let you skip it. One of the things you need to think about when you're creating your interactive projects is returning visitors. What if somebody's already viewed your documentary once, but they want to view it again? Do they have to watch all the sequences again? I'm going to add a skip button in here, which allows returning visitors to skip this intro sequence. That does unfortunately mean that first time visitors will also be able to skip it, but that's kind of a downside I'm going to live with. Okay, so under buttons, I'm gonna go and find this right arrow, and I'm gonna drop that on my canvas. So I do actually have in buttons a skip button, but I quite like this right arrow. I quite like using left and right arrows to navigate through my documentaries. I'm gonna use this right arrow with a little piece of text that says skip video, and it will give my viewers the option to skip this video. Okay, so there's my button. Let's add a little piece of text as well. So let's get a piece of text. Again, I want it to be quite small, so I'm gonna use the paragraph text. Let's drop it onto the canvas, double click in it, and change it so it says, skip 
video. I'm going to right align it and click OK. Let's drag it into place. Might want to change the font so it's the Lato font again, but I think this font looks quite nice. Okay, and there we have it positioned on the screen. You might notice with our button here, it's not exactly pure white. And what I'd like to do is change my skip video text so it also looks like this. So I'm going to click on my text, I'm going to go into my styles, and I'm going to nudge the opacity down to, let's say, 50. Okay, that looks similar enough. Next, I want to have a look at the responsive settings for both my button and my text. So I'm going to go into my general tab, I'm going to select my button, and this one actually has a default size and position. And that means that every right button I put into my project will always be in the same place. So I'm not going to mess with that, I'm going to leave it exactly as it is. I like where it's positioned at the moment. But what I do want to do is change my skip video. So I'm going to change this text, I'm going to go into my general tab here, and I'm going to leave it as a fixed size, and basically I want it to be directly in the centre of the screen, but locked to the right hand side. So my centre Y here is going to be zero. And I'm going to untick the left hand side here, and lock it to the right hand side. So it's always going to stay 84 pixels from the side of the screen. Okay, let's do a save, and let's run our sequence. So run sequence from start, and let's see how that looks. So you should be able to see, skip video, and there's our button over here. And if I change the size of my browser, you should be able to see the text and the button stays in the same place. Okay, let's stop that, and back into Clint. Okay, one more thing I want to do before I link the text and the button is change the timing of when they come onto that sequence. So at the moment, you can see the text and the button right from the start of the sequence. I want to change that so they come in a bit later. So I'm going to push the text back so it starts after about five seconds. And I'm going to do the same with my button. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make them fade in slowly. So with my button selected under my general tab over here, Got my transitions fade. I'm going to make my button fade in for three seconds. And I'm going to make my text fade in for five seconds. Okay, so once again, let's save and let's run my sequence from the start so we can see how that looks. This is one of the things you're going to have to be doing again and again when you're making a clip project. If you're looking at timings, you're going to have to run things again and again to see kind of when they come in. Okay, now we have my skip video text and button. So let's go back to Clint again. And let's actually make these clickable. At the moment, they're not clickable, so they don't actually do anything. So let's start with the button. Select the button, click on our link tab, and this is going to go to, so it's going to go to sequence, and it's going to go to sequence title screen. I'm not ticking overlay this time because it's not an overlay. We want a straight transition to our sequence. And again, with our transitions, we've got options here from our drop down. So currently it's set to slide left. I'm not a big fan of these transitions myself. If you like them, use them. I'm going to go for none. I just want it to be a straight transition, a straight cut. And then what I want to do is do the same for our skip video text. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to make that a link. Go to sequence. Go to title screen and transition none. Okay, so once again, let's save. And now let's click on run project. Okay, so you'll probably see we have a bit of a problem here. What I wanted was that intro video to come on before my title screen. Currently, it's linked to my title screen through those skip buttons, but we don't see it first. And that's because, if I go back to Klim, go back to my storyboard, we still have this home icon showing on my title screen. So if I right click on my intro sequence and select set a startup sequence, 
my intro video is now going to be the first thing we see when we run our project. So again, I'm going to save, I'm going to run, and I'm going to run project. And now my intro video should play first. Okay, there we go. I'm going to wait for those buttons to come on. And there we have, skip video, skip video. So if I click on either the text or the button, that jumps me to my Bin Appetit title screen. Okay, great, so we're almost finished. Let's just go back. Okay, so if we look at our storyboard, we can see from our title screen, we've got a link to our instructions. And from our intro sequence, we've got a link to our title screen. But is currently what we're seeing in our storyboard right? Did we put in one link from our intro sequence to our title screen, or did we put in two? Well, I know for a fact we put in two, because we put in a link from our button and a link from our text. And what you'll find with links, once you put them in, and you go to your storyboard, they actually sit on top of each other. So there are two links here, but they're just nested underneath each other. So if you click on your arrow in the storyboard, obviously the arrow represents your link, you should be able to see this little ball appears. If you click and drag on this ball, you can drag your link out. And what you should be able to see is I've actually got two links. One coming from my text and one coming from my button. Okay, there's one more thing we need to do. And what we haven't thought about so far is what happens when our intro sequence ends. So if I click on my intro sequence, again, we can see it's just over a minute long. But what happens when that minute ends? Unless you've used Clint before, you won't know. But basically, when a sequence ends, it doesn't go anywhere unless you tell it to. So at the moment, when our intro sequence ends, it will just stop on the last frame it plays. And really, what we want to happen is for our intro to go to our title screen when it ends. So we're going to add another link. And to do that, we're going to use this little white semicircle down the bottom. And I'm going to click and drag to connect it to the title screen. And if I click on that link, I'm going to tick on this little box that says automatic transition. And basically what that means is that when the sequence ends, it will automatically transition to the next one. And again, you can set the transition to be whatever you want. Again, I'm going to go for none. That's what I've set my other two transitions to be. And the final thing we're going to do today, I'm going to do a bit of organizing in my storyboard. So we've currently got three links here, but I can't really tell which ones are buttons and which ones are automatic transitions unless I actually click on them and see whether they have the automatic transition option clicked here. I want a really quick and easy way to see what's a button and what's an automatic transition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use colors. And to add a color to a link, all you need to do is right click on it. And you see you've got this set color option. So I'm going to make my automatic transitions green. And I'm going to make my clickable transitions, my buttons, red. And again, once you start building a Clint project, this storyboard can get really complicated really quickly. So these colors can come in handy. Again, this link here is a clickable button, so I'm going to make it red. You can also color sequences if you want. So if I right click on my intro sequence, we can set color. We can even set size. So you should be able to see at the moment my intro sequence is large because that's my startup sequence. My title sequence is a medium size because it's just a normal sequence. And my instruction sequence is small because it's an overlay. I actually don't mind this way of working. I think it kind of makes sense to me because I've been using Clint quite a lot. But if you do want to color or change the sizes of your sequence, you can do that. Okay, so that's everything we're going to go through today. I'm going to save my project. And I'm going to close it. And in Workshop 3, we'll start to look at some of the more advanced functions of Klimt.